Fred Film Radio, I'm Angela Cherby from the Venice Festival here with uh, the opening night, the opening short film of the Critics Week, Pinned into a Dress by Gianluca Materese, which is here with us together with Guillaume Tomas. And with, the star, <laughs> and with the star, Miss Fame, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good to see you. Good to see you as well in flesh. Yes. Now. As good in the flesh. I oh, hope. absolutely. Even better. Thank Even you. Better in flesh. That was important for me, as, <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> as we saw. Um, so I want to start with, uh, I don't know if, I want to start with the two directors uh, to ask how did this project come along, come together, and how did you work to build it up. The togetherness starts with the friendship, first of all, because we actually met Guillaume, and Guillaume was already, she, she, he knew uh, Miss Fame since a long time. Yeah, 2016. Okay. Uh, when I saw Miss Fame, and I fell in love with the image, and that's where it started. Uh, we understood that it was a turning point uh, at this uh, time to have that much queer visibility in fashion, but also in mainstream media. It was starting to, to get big. Uh, and so we decided to, to record uh, that moment and to, to come together to, to tell that story. And then I was at the time um, shooting Fashion Babylon, the thing that, that you know well. And, um, and I met Guillaume because he was, document he was documenting uh, p people in this world and he was also very close to Miss Fame, so all those years. And so we had this, uh, this encounter when the films are always encounters. And I met Miss Fame through uh, this project. I met Guillaume through uh, filming a film. So uh, films are encounters. And, and I hope also people will meet Miss Fame through the film. So uh, that's the purpose. And uh, the, as soon as uh, I met Miss Fame, and uh, we were shooting actually the no British Vogue yeah. um, event. Um, and then I, I, I was astonished by the awareness and the lucidity she has for uh, towards the the process of her, her, um, the industry where she evolves and the, the, this like awareness was for me really really uh, unique that I never seen anywhere. Which is actually what I was um, I, <clears throat> I wanted to ask because your accepting to do a movie like this on yourself so deep and so revealing was could have been risky it could have been very dangerous too for your image but you meant then not to be i mean not i mean to make it well yeah. and uh, were you aware of this risk and how did you manage to work with them in order to avoid it i actually didn't feel risk i also um I felt it was a part of my healing process uh, with everything that was seen in the film. Of course, there's uh, many, many decades before that of introspective uh, therapy, conversations, getting sober, having family problems like many people do, and also um, finding the moments to self-accept because many artists in my field, we present this warrior, and we are, but behind the effort is probably a lot of broken people and um, not I would say I have come from this place where I felt broken and also empowered it was always a contradiction I feel like I live as a contradiction mm -hmm. but I I felt it was important for me uh, from the beginning of my breakthrough to pivot myself not just to being what we expect drag artistry to be but to take it places conversationally uh, to relate it to the mass i want people to relate and not just see makeup wigs and hair but but feel a human story and uh, anyone can find themselves in struggle loss and trauma Absolutely. many of us at least and actually the movie goes far beyond the drug artistry as you said is yeah. even more even deeper and more uh, describing what a life of a person that does your job yeah. has to go through because this is is not only being 
an artist is not being a model and so being able to as Guillaume said to acknowledge the, 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 the rules of the fashion world which are not easy totally and no, absolutely not easy and uh, uh, were there moments where you felt too exposed during the shooting no. that you decided that <laughs> now the guys and the guys <laughs> yeah today <laughs> I realized that it was um, revealing mm -hmm. I watched it at home on my iPhone and it was not revealing because I, I did that I was there I was reliving it like we do when we look at any photo or film in our in, uh, in our phone um, it's different when it's in front of a live audience and also where people can then have an opinion about you mm -hmm. within proximity you know you're sitting in a room where you hear emotions happening because they're relating Um, there was certain things, of course, I want to protect myself in perfectionism. It's such a nasty word, perfection, because it's not realistic and it's uh, an aspiration. It's never attained. We try. Very demanding. Totally. And mm -hmm. I feel that uh, when I looked at the moments that really made me hold my breath, there were certain you know, where maybe it was the getting ready and taking my armor away. There was that in-between, which I know is cinematic, it's graphic, but I'm also disarmoring myself yeah. to the, the lens, to the audience. And, uh, you know, in being seen as Curtis, it's something I never really do because I do feel quite uncomfortable mm -hmm. and um, just shy or questioning myself. I like knowing myself, and I feel as Miss Fame, I have a very clear understanding of the process. After that, my regular life, that's where all my questions actually do lie. But they are flowing together at the same time because everything is, uh, what is this going to be next? Where am I taking this part of me mm -hmm. next, especially in fashion? Because they're looking next to. Yeah. They're looking at, who's that over there? Yeah. So I'm having to uh, find ways to stay in emotion that's fully authentic to the way I like to work. And do you feel or do you think that, that through the years in, in the fashion world, some, the feelings about modeling has changed so there are less, less restrictions so that artists like you can actually evolve and ex explode in that business or is still like very difficult to enter? I think it presents itself currently that it's inclusive. I think fashion wants to look like they're still ahead, but they've, they're not ahead. And fashion hasn't been ahead for as long as I've been alive. I think they grab onto certain things that are existing and it's very strategic. Once you're inside and you start to understand there's a game being played and you, you get the game because you're aware that there's nepotism, etc. Those are things I didn't think. I, I'm a dreamer. I, I, I want beauty to live. I want to fantasize. Fashion is a fantasy. Can I fantasize inside as fame? I am. I do. But I am facing an uphill battle every single contract, uh, every time that I enter a space where people scratch their head when I wonder why is this still uncomfortable for people. Yeah, exactly. This is what I want to know because this yeah. is what it feels from the movie. But at least they're presenting the, as if. Yeah. Because it, yeah, that there's, means there's, yeah. there's there space. There is a facade yeah. that is uh, in, inclusive but not that much. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what brought us together. We are dreamers. And so we bonded over that and we trust each other because of that also, because we, we go in the same direction. Like we, we want to go towards an ideal, to, towards light. Uh, and it's how we came together. Um, and because you were mentioning trust, uh, so, uh, yeah, like so, uh, yeah, the three of you had the same agenda. Yeah, through through the film, we care yeah. about each other, and we we don't want to harm anyone telling this story. And the fact that she's revealing, like also what's behind the, the this creature, uh, what's what's the real uh, um, self, it's universal, mm -hmm. and that's what why people relate to to the story. And and also what's important that also was exploring with my other film fashion. Babylon, it's being a free spirit as consequences. Once you decide to be a free spirit, free mind, it's a big responsibility. It takes a lot of braveness and, uh, and that, that comes with consequences. It's a very harsh industry, but you, we make choices yeah. to evolve in this, in this, in this kind and of thing. I think that at some point you, you cannot do differently because no, it's, it's, a choice. I mean, it's your nature. I, it's your, it's your because soul. Because torture, as you say, torture is also a choice. It, it, it torture, but is also beauty it's uh, we are we are not black and white we are in the middle and we mm -hmm. go white we go black and 
We go so blue and yellow sometimes. Yellow and yeah, and rainbow. Whatever. We go multi <laughs> Rainbow, yeah. Uh, listen, Gianluca, as I, I mean, I know you from ages, and I know that you are very prolific and very productive director. So, roughly, how much footage did you throw away in the editing room? Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, this is a project where we want to make it longer. This is a project where this, this was the begin. This is the beginning of our collaboration. We really yeah. want to go farther and make it like a long feature film. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Guillaume um, uh, arrived with footage that has been like sh shooting for years in the backstage uh, of like fashion world, we were like ex ex analyzing the footage and saying, what can come next? How we can tell this story? And that came up with the idea of the introspection with the mm -hmm. uh, with the analysis. But maybe that we can maybe just last for a short narrative as a uh, short movie maybe it will develop longer in where where are the conflicts in the story which is many chapters that we want to open yeah and it will keep going yeah, yeah actually actually the film gives this feeling of to be continued yeah, you yes. know absolutely and Even if there is no written in the end, yeah. but the, yeah. the, the, you know, but for sure we, we want to explore more of, of the of the daily life, which goes from extreme I actually jumps. would like to yeah. <laughs> to focus <laughs> more on Curtis because yeah. uh, uh, Curtis Project. loves uh, chickens. Yeah, <laughs> uh, when I'm not here, I'm on a farm. No, yeah, 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 I'm doing a balance. It's it's a quite. I grew up on a farm, uh -huh. and so I'm making friends. I'm living in Switzerland. My husband's Swiss. I moved from New York two years ago, and I had to reimagine what my life could look like when I've made a clean slate mm -hmm. and. Uh, I thought, is this a geographic? Did I move because I, in New York, COVID, all of that? Yes, yes, yes. But also, this is change, it's life, it's always going to be like this. And um, you just have to find acceptance in your, your shift. Mm -hmm. uh, and I built relationships with people I might not have thought to know, uh, but connected back to the nostalgia of simplicity and like Mother Earth and beauty. But it's good for my mind, it's really yeah. good for my heart. So you're going to be more comfortable with Curtis coming over and I, I have coming to be, out. Yeah, I yeah. think I, I have to find a time in my life to accept myself in all facets of myself, not just the public image of what I present. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in in film and in, in, in fashion across the board, there's a veil that the world presents and many people can live like that. They might be connected, they might have grown up that way where they're in the south of France for a holiday and a lot of Americans don't take holidays like this. But being that I'm married to a, a Swiss, uh, we travel and I was able with my work to travel and with opportunities and editorials I've, I'm seeing the world so there was many many moments in my life where I thought I cannot believe this is happening like mm -hmm. my first festival to Cannes I, I cried in the hotel room because I'm staying <laughs> in a luxury hotel car service uh, you know support from these major brands uh, wearing uh, designer you know everything was top 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 uh, security I felt respected mm -hmm. and in between from that high point Point was a lot of still many low points where the covers are still pulled mm -hmm. they're not fully ready they they are going to say what they're going to say to your face because they don't understand you yeah exactly. so I can't let the public see the arguments that happened before because somebody can't understand this body mm -hmm. uh, why is your nipple seen through the shirt and it's not allowed on a red carpet and it's so these are real moments where I think this is um tension because it's a queer body and they do not feel comfortable with queer bodies being represented next to uh, cisgendered people where they can understand it it's uncomprehensible to me it's comprehensible oh of course but it's my, my life comprehensible, but for yeah. them for them it's not even accepted or yeah. or conceivable at some point you know still but when the cameras hit it's like you have to push that to the corner of your mind and focus on the fact that this is my win so as soon as i'm walking it's i'm winning it's my win Absolutely. so that is not going to affect me i'll take it to the end and then i'll bend and we do that i'm like this is bullshit i can't believe it but it's it's a balance and i've dealt with it my whole life so i'm still familiar well, I'm really glad to have to have this talk with you because I really love the film. So thanks a lot to Miss Fame for everything with us, to Gianluca Matarese and to Guillaume Thomas. Thanks a lot f for the film Pin Into a Dress that opened the uh, Critics Week here at the Venice Festival. I'm Angela Cervi for Fred, the Festival Insider. Thanks a lot.